So Hare Krishna, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. So we are on our, what is it, third verse. Next verse, the one after that is the one that we all are familiar with because it's we hear it in the class like every single day. I, I, do they do it before the recording? They do it during the recording. So yeah, everybody hears, everybody hears this one, even if they're not a, a, attending live. And so that's coming up next. That's the one, that's a little shorter one. So Dana K, Edward just said, this one looks a little bit scary. This one looks a little bit scary, but um, this is where actually Sudha Goswami starts dropping the bars. He starts uh, doing the hip hop Bhagavatam and it, it, it's actually can be quite nice. Um, let me just check my... One sec. I want to check my Zoom account and make sure there's not too much stuff like uh, the previous class in there because um, it's recording to the cloud and then it might get it might run out of space because I think they give you one gig. I'm like two classes kind of usually goes over that. Okay, we'll see. Recordings and today's the twenty eighth. I think we're okay, let's delete this one. Twenty first. Okay, just deleted that. All right, and now let's I'm gonna open up email okay here it is so yes srimad bhagavatam om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya so we're on chapter two of the srimad bhagavatam first canto and so this is basically the whole philosophy of the Bhagavatam, uh, some really important points of bhakti are all in this chapter. And the, the nine stages of bhakti are as, as Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur, he's even made it even uh, more smaller stages. 14 different stages of bhakti are going to be described in the, uh, in the verses of this chapter. How the unique position of bhakti, how generally, like, uh, you know, if you want to go to college, you, uh, you got to graduate high school. If you want to go to high school, you need uh, to, you know, pat, go to pass your middle school. And if you want to go to middle school like that, there's some, there's some requirements that are there. And generally in all the different yoga systems, there are some requirements uh, to progress to various stages and, for example, to practice jnana yoga, you'll find in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna saying, become a perfect karma yoga, karma yogi. Like there's this verse in chapter six, I think it is um, verse, let's see, or ver chapter eight or chapter six. Let me pull it up. Verse Bhagavad Library, Bhagavad Gita, so chapter six. Six three, Arukshormane yogam karma karma karna muchite yoga da, yoga rudasya tasyaiva shama karna muchite. For one who is like a beginner in the yoga system, karma karma yoga is said to be the means. That's the process. And one who has already achieved elevation in yoga, cessation of material activities is said, said to be the means. And so generally, the um, the jnanis and the, those who are in this um, karma yoga, they practice um, the cessation of material activities. And the karma yogis are engaged in material activities. Um, but here they said there's some qualification. There's a qualification to entering into that jnana yoga path. But as we'll hear later on in this chapter, um, 
you don't. Bhakti is very powerful. It brings all these qualifications with it. Like uh, usually you need some knowledge and you need some renunciation to enter that higher stage. Just like you would need to have the, um, you would need to have the high school diploma to enter into college. You know, what to speak of like, uh, you know, graduating college. There's all these different qualifications there. But he, later on in these chapters, we'll find out that bhakti brings knowledge and it brings detachment automatically. Um, it is it is an important element in the beginning, knowledge and detachment. But in the long run, that knowledge and detachment becomes a byproduct of bhakti itself. So there's all really key philosophical points about devotional service. Very cool, important chapter. Welcome, Carmen. Hare Krishna, welcome, Vishwato Mukha Prabhu. That awesome. So this uh, yeah. So open up. So this is one, two, three. Yaswanu Bhavam Akila Shuta Sadamekam Adyatma Deepam Atitirti Shitam Tamandam Sam Sadinam Karuna Yaha Purana Guhyam Tam Vyasa Sunam Upayami Guru Muninam Okay, so let's see. He's saying, let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him, Sukha. Here, I should, let me just pull it up on the screen. We can all just share the screen one second. So I can... Uh, maybe make it a little bigger. You're not making it bigger. It's not making it bigger. See it? It's big enough for you or no? No, it's not big enough to see on my on my screen. I just have a little uh, phone screen. Okay, uh, let me. And here, let me unshare the screen. I think the um, okay. I think I have to. Make the text bigger before sharing the screen. Now it should be better. Okay, now I can do it. All right, is that a little better? Can you see it? Yeah? Okay. So let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Shuka. The spiritual master of all sages. So he is Guru Munina. He is the guru of all the sages. So he's the guru of all the sages. Who out of his great compassion, how do you say compassion? Anybody know who? It's our famous... Uh, Karuna. Yes, our famous student, Karuna. Karuna, yeah. With, with, because of his great compassion for the gross materialists who are struggling to cross over the darkest regions of material existence. So tama is darkness, and anda means like a well. So together, it's like this really dark. They're both uh, synonyms for for illusion and ignorance. And so tamandam. There atiti dirsha. That's one of the big. That's one of the words that um, 
you will have you know, that you when you look at it, it's like oh my gosh, look at that word. It's got a t t t s h a t m. It's like a t t t. So how do you say that? So uh, a t itself is is like means very, like you say, a t sundar, very beautiful. A t means very. It's an emphasizer. And to tirshatam. What does Prabhupada say? I was just reading Prabhupada. He explains this to tirshatam. Where is that note? Tirshatam. To tirshatam. Here, I'm looking it up. Prabhupada speaks on this one. Means to surpass. When you desire to overcome, ati tirshatam, desiring to, to, to surpass, and ati very, you really, he's, so his great compassion. He wants to, them to overcome the mandam, this darkness of material existence. He spoke this most confidential supplement to the cream of Vedic knowledge. After having personally assimilated it by experience. Okay. So, Yaswanu Bhavam, Yaswanu Bhavam, Yaswanu Bhavam, Anu Bhavam, this, this Swanu Bhavam means that he completely digested, completely understood, completely experienced the teachings of the Bhagavatam. Like, um, here I have some little notes here from Srila Prabhupada. What does he say? He says, da, da, da. he quotes uh, this Bhagavat Porya Giya, Bhagavat Stane. If you want to read the Bhagavatam, you must approach a person whose life li is living Bhagavatam. He's living the Bhagavad Gita. So Sugadeva Goswami, he completely absorbed, completely um, immersed himself. He became uh, the like the himself the a Bhagavata, the 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 essence of all um, spiritual knowledge. And this Bhagavata is really characterized by understanding the sweetness, the character of the supreme personality of Godhead. So he he be Came very attracted by that. One, one of the famous verses of the Bhagavatam is this Atma Atma Ramas Chamunayo. Any of you heard of that verse before? Bhakta Charlie, have you ever heard that? Atma Ramas? Edward? Okay, so uh, it's it's a it's a verse that Lord Chaitanya gives 64 different translations of. And he takes each word, and uh, but the basic, um, there, there are many. They all have kind of a certain theme, but Atma Rama means someone who's self-satisfied, deeply self-satisfied. Don't don't they don't need anything. Like Sukadev Goswami was, even before he was in contact with the Bhagavatam, he was uh, merged into the spiritual. Uh, Brahmananda, the, the 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 bliss of the soul, uh, having complete uh, freedom from bodily designation. So that's Sukadev Goswami. He's a great, great, great soul. This is before he is a devotee. Before he is having this connection to bhakti, he is already free from all material designation. He is he is already self-realized. He realizes. The, the, the self beyond the body. And you would say it's not fully self-realized because first of all, knowing what you're not is not still not knowing what you are. You know, who are you really? Like what do you do in the spiritual world? You know, knowing that your spirit is like the first step. So Sukadeva Goswami, the this verse, Atma Ramas Chamunio, it means a person who is self-satisfied, the, the Krishna and his pastimes are so attractive that even a person that doesn't need anything is intensely attracted by Krishna. 
And so Shukadev Goswami became that person who was deeply immersed, fully digested. So he's Swanubhavam. This Swa means like himself. Like we say, your swarup, your form, or swadharma, your your duties, your what your what your um, spiritual activities. So this swa means your yours. Swanubhavam. He completely understood, completely digested. Ya means him. So ya swanubhavam, akila. You can do that. Let's do that. Akila. I don't see Edward's hand. Akila. Complete. Akila. Let's see it again. Akila. Akila. Complete. Complete. Let's see. All around. Oh, there it says what that. What does it say in the word for it? All around. Let's see if that's a good motion for it too. But yeah, this is complete. All around. Uh, where there's some, some, you some find this. Where do you find this word? You find this word in other places. The Akila Guru, the spiritual master of all the the worlds of everything. So Akila has this sense of all creation, all around, all around, complete. So Akila Shruta. Everyone can do this little shruta. Grab your ear. Shruta. Shruta. Say shruta. Shruta. There is a book called the Shrutis. Those are the Vedas, the Upanishads. Those are the, the, the knowledge that has been heard. And then you have the later literature. It's called the Smitis, those which are remembered. And there are different classes of literature. So the Shrutis are the ancient Vedas that are eternal sounds that are heard. So Shruti Saram. I know we get a lot of vocabulary here, but yeah. it, uh, eventually we start coming across these words again. So it helps. And then, and then, and then we see, okay, now I remember this word. Saram means essence. Sar, saram. What is this? There's a song. Sarva Dharma Sar. Jiva Doya Krishna Nam Sarva Dharma Sar. Is to, is like the essence of spirituality. Mercy for, every, for souls, being compassionate towards others, and Krishna's name. Yeah, and, you know, this connection to Krishna's name. Sarva Dharma Sar. All the dharmas, all the essence of, the essence. So that's where in the verse it says the, what does it say in the translation? The cream. So sara, mean, sara means essence. Shruti saram ekam. So the, 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 the complete essence of all the Vedas. Yaswanu bhava makilam shruti saram ekam. Yaswanu bhavam akila shuddhisara mekam. And then you've seen the arti. You know, they have the arti. It's called the, when they have the lamp, that's the deepa. Like you have the deepa wali, diwali, the festival of lights. You know? Um, Adyatma, for the soul, for the soul. It's the light for the soul. Atma, Atma means the soul. Adyatma. What does it say here? Transcendental, spiritual. Adyatma. Torchlight. Like, uh, like as we mentioned earlier, there is a certain, there are certain qualities that come from devotional service. So you have in chapter 10, there's four verses that are considered the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. And so the first verse, uh, Krishna says, I'm the source of all material and, and, uh, and spiritual. Um, and the second verse um, is talking about how my devotees like to um, 
immerse themselves in these, these um, what is, how does it go? Verse 8, 10, 8. It's, um, I forget 10, 8. It's not coming right now. I have to start with 10, 1 and go all the way through. 10, and 10, 9 is, much chitta magata prana bhoda yasparam parasparam katayantas chachamam nityam dushanti cha ramanti cha that the bodhis immerse themselves in hearing about Krishna. And then 10.9 is this very nice verse. This actually, if you ever want to learn a Bhagavad Gita verse, um, this one is so, it's very simple. And uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a very nice verse to meditate. Tesham, to those, satata, who are always yukta, engaged. And, 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 the, and the, the, you know, the, from Sanskrit to English, it's very clear. So then it makes it the whole thing quite easier. Tesham, to those satata who are always yukta, engaged, bhajatam, in worship, purvakam with love, the dami, I give, buddhi, intelligence, yena, by which, upayanti te, they can come back to me. And so one may wonder, where is this intelligence coming from? Krishna says in the next verse, Tesham evanugam, Itesham evanu kam partam agyana dam agyana jam tesham evanu kam partam agyana jam namashamaha gyana di pena bashvata. I'm missing a word or so, but he's saying this gyana di pena, the knowledge, the light of knowledge. I will, whatever darkness is there, which is relating to this verse, whatever darkness is there, whatever illusion, whatever misconception is there. I will destroy that ignorance with the shining lamp of knowledge, dwelling when they're dwelling within their hearts. Within their hearts, I'll do this. So you have the story of the the great. Um, uh, so you have Lord Chaitanya. He was traveling in India, and then there was a Brahmana, and he noticed that people were uh, criticizing him. They're in, insulting him. They're making fun of him. And um, they're saying that he's actually he's just a you know, you know unintel he's he's in the role of a, a, a brahmin a priest an educator but he doesn't even he's so uneducated he doesn't even know how to read Sanskrit properly which is like all of us none of us know how to so but and he can he can read in a certain degree but not not to the level of a proper Sanskritist like you know. And so people, these brahmanas were making fun of him. And it's like practically as the book upside down, you could say, you know, reading. But when he would pick up Bhagavad Gita, tears would like gush out of his eyes. And so Lord Chaitanya sat with him and, and said, you know, um, I see when you're reading Bhagavad Gita, you, you're, you, you, you feel such great emotion and devotion. And he saw Lord Chaitanya was not like the others. He wasn't there to make fun of him. And he said, whenever I see my Lord, he is the Lord of the universe. He is the Lord of all beings. He is the owner of all planets. And what is he doing? He's becoming the taxi driver of his devotee. That just puts me to tears. And so... And and so Lord Chaitanya said, you have understood <laughs> Bhagavad Gita. Others may have not, but you have understood. So this Jnani Dipena, Krishna gives knowledge. Even if he he he, he just had that that prop that devotion, it allowed him to see things that ones without devotion could not see. And so um Jnani Dipena Bhashvata, I destroy. The darkness of ignorance, the shining lamp of knowledge. You can't, the, the darkness can't put out the light. You just have like, you know, you have a completely dark room. Send one little candle, one little light. And you will notice, and if you have blackout curtains, you have a completely blacked out room. You could have some tiny light in that room. And you're like, oh man, that light, I can't sleep. It could be like a tiny little light that's like, the monitor's like little, uh, you know, if it's plugged in or something, it has like a little, uh, you know, red light or something like that. Just these small lights, it completely, 
but it, it automatically it just spreads throughout the whole room. It could, it, you, you'd be surprised how much light it produces in the total darkness. So the darkness can't put out the light. And this one light, it destroys the darkness. So this is uh, this Adyatma Deepam. Adyatma Deepam. Deepa means this lamp, this light. Adyatma Deepam. Atiti. And ho, let's look at this word. It's uh, here a little. Where's where to where to pause here? Atiti. The and the word to tear shitam. That's one word, and ati is um, the very. Uh, so this is a desiring to overcome. So you can go atiti tear shitam. Atiti tirshatam and tamandam. And Prabhupada talks about, you know, in, in India they will have these, you know, you hear I actually hear you hear Ragana talk about this, these wells. They're not like the European wells with bricks all around. Uh, I've seen them. I've seen them at a like an elementary school. There's like you're just walking, and then there is a there is a you know four foot wide, um, 15, 20 foot deep hole in the ground. It's like, it was, someone's going to die here. This thing's crazy. Just uh, You fall in that thing that you can't get out and you'll probably, you know, break your limbs on the way down and you just, out, you're just there screaming until hopefully someone finds you and you are, you just die of internal injuries and, and, and uh, you know, in the in this you know muck on the bottom of the wall you know whatever maybe some muddy well so uh that that is i guess that might have happened you know that there's always talking about this well like maybe people fall in in these holes and and, and it's a it's a very you, you know you, you can only get help from outside you can't really do anything yourself you really need some assistance so this is a darkness of ignorance. Um, and so the, 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 the saintly people, they're karuna. They're very merciful. They're very kind. They're trying to help people out of ignorance. Because we are, we are suffering due to our own ignorance. We're constantly suffering due to our own ignorance. And so saintly people are, uh, you know, is being glorified. That they're, that they're trying to help us out of this ignorance. And one of the ways that they're helping us is they're giving the, the, the deepest secrets of the Puranas, the, the, the almost essential spiritual knowledge, Purana Guhyam. So here, if we look at the purport, the first part of the purport, Prabhupada sums up some of the history. In this prayer, Srila Sutta Goswami practically summarizes the complete introduction of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is a natural supplementary commentary on Vedanta Sutras. The Vedanta Sutras or the Brahma Sutras were compiled by Vyas with a view of presenting the cream of Vedic knowledge. The Srimad Bhagavatam is a natural commentary on this cream. So the Shruti Saram Ekam, this is uh, Prabhupada saying is referring to the Vedanta. Some also re say it refers to Bhagavatam itself, or the Bhagavatam is the essence of the essence. You know, it's the cream of the cream. It's like the. Um, Srila Sukadeva Goswami was a thoroughized realizer of Vedanta Sutra, and consequently had personally realized the commentary, Srimad Bhagavatam. And just to show his boundless mercy to the bewildered materialistic man who wanted to cross completely over nations, who recited. For the first time, this confidential knowledge. So, there is a history of Vedic literature that you'll find uh, described in the first canto of the Bhagavatam. So, Vyasadeva, he uh, sought to first uh, take the Vedas, which were one body of uh, knowledge that was uh, that was that was all uh, oral. Um, passed down and he put it into literature form and he 
Vyas means, the word Vyas means to edit. So he uh, basically organized it in a more uh, systematic form. So because he could see that in the future, people would not have the memories. Like we're, the, the, you know, these, these sages and the, even the, the, just the brahmanas of the past, they could memorize thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of books. And we're looking at one verse and we're like, ah! Oh, no, one verse. <laughs> so he knew, like, we're going to be struggling. We're going to be struggling. Actually, Prabhupada talks about on um, this verse, he says one key element uh, for memory is celibacy. He, t- he talks on this verse. twice. He, he mentions the story of um, there was a court case and um, there was two men that had some kind of disagreement and they were speaking something and the other one was saying something insulting and they said that and they went to court and they asked were there any witnesses and they said yeah there was one brahmana uh or it was one monk actually brahmachari and he was you know bathing in the river river nearby or he was in, in like in, in in uh you know hearing distance and this monk, this was like years later, they called him to court. Uh, years later, they called this monk to court and he recited the entire conversation. He said, I don't even know the context, but this is exactly what they said. And he said what the man said and then the was reply and then what was the next thing that was said. So this is, we have many different tools. One of the tools is... Um, so in, is that that uh, retaining the ojas in Ayurveda? There is an energy that is preserved. There is a, 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 a bodily datu or a bodily ingredient that is um, creating a type of um, effects on the body, and that is called ojas. And if we're overly sexually indulgent, we lose our ojas. It's two ways to lose ojas: is over sexual indulgence and anxiety those things destroy ojas and ojas affects the aura aura is your you know in modern biology we learn that our skin is our first line of defense but in 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 ayurveda our aura is our first line of defense you know we have you know people giving us the, the you know evil eyes some people you know maybe uh, hostile or jealous or envious those those kind of energies can affect us, but the good aura psh, this blocks it away. And then also the one's um, mental intellectual digestion. And how many of you um, have ever watched a movie when you're really sick? Yeah. And did you ever experience? I I've experienced this. If you're when you're really sick. Especially if you watch some movie that, like, maybe if you watch, like, the worst idea is to watch, like, a horror movie and you're really sick. You'll find that your mental digestion, your intellectual digestion, because just like your, when you take in um, food, your body takes in the food and it says, okay, this nutrient, I'm going to put it, I'm going to do this with that. You know, this product, I'm going to put it to waste. This product, you know, it's like it starts, uh, you know, organizing wh- where everything goes. This goes to the blood. This goes to, you know, this comes out in the urine. This comes out this way. And it just, you know, takes what it needs and it basically files it. It goes, this goes here. This goes for like proteins. This goes for fat. This, um, And, um, you know, indigestion, you're not really, t- when you have indigestion, you're basically, your body is just, Whatever it's taking in, more of it's just actually making uh, waste products, and it's not really taking in all the nutrients that it could take in from that food. So when you have intellectual indigestion, say you watch something, watch some movie, and then instead of like, oh, taking, you know, you, you had the experience of some kind of entertainment, um, and then you like let that, ex- you let the memories go, you're you're done with it. No, when you, if you have bad intellectual digestion, like when you're sick and you watch some horror movie, then you won't be able to get out of your head. It will just stuck in your head, just rolling in your head. 
and you're like, oh man, why did I watch that movie? I'm trying to sleep, and my, I, I just can't let those things go. So we'll remember the things that we will we're trying to forget, and we'll forget the things that we're trying to remember, that are important to remember. So that's intellectual digestion, and that's uh, ojas is related to that. So Prabhupada talks about yeah that how. Um, Let's see, what does he say? This is picked up. Memory. I wonder, I'm trying to remember why he brought it up. But that, that so yeah, it is related to what we're doing here. So verses, yeah, so um practice and overly sexually indulgent, yes. Now that so the 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 that's why the the, the brahmacharis they will be very sharp you know practicing brahmachari nice and become very sharp also anxiety destroys ojas so if you're brahmachari then you're full of anxiety then you're also destroying your ojas any questions or comments Oh, here's a nice point, too. Uh, Prabhupada said, to become liberated is not the final stage. As we mentioned, you have the those who fully realize that they're not the body, the, the, the Atma Ramas. He, Prabhupada said it's like, um, uh, there's a word, convalescent stage, when, you're, when you're, you're getting over a fever, and now you're fine. You're not affected by fever. Um, but that's considered like you're kind of halfway there. If you're, but when you're out, like actually like having fun, when your body is fully enlivened, then that's like the higher state. So similarly, you you when you're free from ignorance, and you come to this, I'm not the body stage of atmarama, is fully self-satisfied. That's one stage. But when you're actually experiencing in your yourself as a soul, like you you have your full identity, then that's the actual higher stage. Not not just realizing what you're not, but experiencing what you are. Acting as a soul. Da -da. Let's see, any other points here from Prabhupada's lectures? Um, let's see this. Samsarinam. Everyone knows that word, samsara. Samsara. Psych. There is uh, my. I know a devotee in in uh, Dallas. He had a band, uh, uh, like a, a metal band, called Samsara. Uh, but he spelt it S O M S A R A, because everyone was like, you know. Sam, Sarah, <laughs> where's Sam? Who's Sam? Who's Sarah? <laughs> so I can just put S O M. Yeah, it's like Samsar. So, so Sarinam. So, so Sarinam. It's a cycle of birth and death. Karuna Yaha. Karuna Aha. Karuna Yaha. Purana Guhyam. So Guya means secret. Like uh, you have this chapter nine of Bhagavad Gita. It's called, it's Guya Tamam. It's the greatest secret because it, it deals directly with bhakti. It's a, a um, like you have Guya, secret, Guyatra, more secret. And chapter nine is Guya Tamam, most secret. So Guya means something that is uh, not widely known, not easily understood. It's a secret. Like, for example, this even the very basics of Bhagavad Gita, it's a secret. How many universities can you go and learn that you are not this body? That's a secret. It's not well known. You know, what, what to speak of the, you know, that's not the that's where we start off. That's our basic like starting point of Eastern philosophy is you're not the body. But most universities are not even at that level. So it's a great secret. So Purana Guyam, this very confidential knowledge of the uh, this Purana. Oh, let me go back. What we're saying, Vyasadev, 
the history is that so he compiled the Vedas. He uh, then he also produced other literatures such as Upanishads. Vedas dealt a lot with um, um, materialistic things. Do this sacrifice, you get you get this thing. So it's you have basically three different levels um, in any religious tradition. You have people come to the religious tradition because they're seeking something. You know, they call, what is that prosperity gospel? They call it. Um, we come to religious tradition because even if it's a promise for material enjoyment in heaven, in the in the, you know higher planets or or you know people are promised some kind of you know why you want to go to heaven. It's not to becoming a loving servant to God. It's like I will enjoy. So this is karma kanda, one level. Then the next level is jnana kanda. Those who realize that the the whatever heaven has to whatever materialistic enjoyment has to offer it, it's it doesn't really it's actually there's always some problems the idea of of just enjoying the temporary enjoying the senses there's there's always some issue there so i want to just actually be free from samsara those are the gyanis those are the uh the um what do you call it? there's a jnana kanda section of the vedas so you have people who come to religion because they want some, it's a promise of some enjoyment, material enjoyment. There are those who just want to achieve liberation, moksha, nirvana, the uh, get out of you know this this world of suffering. And then the highest is someone they don't want something for themselves. They don't want either enjoyment or freedom from suffering. They actually uh, have. Um, Maybe not initially, but they, they have this desire just to please Krishna, please God, offer something. Um, they may come with some desire, and that desire is purified and transformed to be selfless. So he compiled Upanishads for those people who are, who are a little bit wiser, who want to seek liberation. Um, he did books like Mahabharat, Ramayana put this in textual form, you know, uh, uh, he, he, Mahabharat was, it, these books, especially Mahabharat was described, this is for the common people, people who are not philosophical, because it's full of romance, it's full of violence, it's full of intrigue, it's full of action, it's, it's just a beautiful story, you know, usually most people are not on, um, uh, you know, on their TV, just watching uh, videos of just sh straight stoicism philosophy. People want to watch drama and all these things. So Mahabharata was like that. But in the Mahabharata is Bhagavad Gita. So you get, it's like the the uh, medicine inside the, covered with the, the sugar coating. Or, you know, you put some medicine and some syrup so it's tolerable for the child. Um, all these things. He, Veda Vyas, he wrote all these things. This is described in the first canto. And at the very end, he did not feel happy. Something was wrong. And so he approached his guru, and his guru says, the reason is you've not actually presented the essence. People can read all the Vedas and still be confused. So here's the essence. You know, now it's time for you to Present Bhagavatam because Bhagavatam aims straight at the essence. So, uh, so, Shruta Saram Ekam. And oh, here's another point. There's the Vedanta Sutra is a genre of literature. This sutra means thread. And it's a, it's a genre of literature that means uh, it's not to be, you can't read a sutra and understand it on itself. It's something that is kind of like an index or something that you study, but in relation to a commentary, a bhashya. You can't, you can't read yoga sutras and fully understand. They're, they're, it's meant to be very terse, very small, very compact uh, verses. And so they're kind of like a, it's like an index, little memory cards that, 
you 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 have the commentary in your head and you have and you remember that that one shloka that one tiny verse to open uh to and and the commentary or that opens up those verses and so the famous commentary on vedanta what was became one of the most famous ones the first ones uh, are not the uh, the is the impersonalist commentary by Shari, uh, called Sharirak Bhashya by uh, Shankaracharya. And so uh, Vedanta, which is not in an in a impersonal, it's actually giving uh, Bhagavan or giving the personality of Godhead in its description, was translated or interpreted to be very impersonal by one of the first commentaries. And then uh, what was what was recognized as the first commentaries, and then uh, later on, different acharyas, different gurus, different author, uh, different uh, challengers presented other commentaries. If you want to be recognized as a serious school of thought in India, you have to have a commentary of Vedanta Sutra. So Ramanujacharya, he presented his commentary. Madhvacharya, he had his commentary. Uh, Baladevi Bhushan. He presented a commentary in the Gaudiya tradition. But Baladevi Bhushan came later after Lord Chaitanya. And the reason why in, in Chaitanya's tradition they didn't have a commentary is because the commentary on the Vedanta Sutra is the Bhagavatam itself. Each line of the Vedanta Sutra has a corresponding verse or several verses in the Bhagavatam. The Puranas describe the Bhagavatam as the commentary, as the thing that opens up the Vedanta Sutra. Now, who wrote the Bhagavatam? It was put together by Vyas. Who wrote Vedanta Sutra? It was put, it's Vyas. So who's going to explain their own book better than themselves? So that was the whole point, that uh, Vyas uh, put together the Bhagavatam, and it's an explanation of the Vedanta Sutra. And therefore, uh, the, there are certain words, like in the first verse, that re refer to the Vedanta Sutra, like Janmad Asya Yataha. That's the first line of Vedanta Sutra, and it is the first line of the Bhagavatam. Um, is everybody following? Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, so Vedanta Sutra is, is uh, it's Vedanta. Veda means knowledge, anta means, and it's the complete conclusion of the Vedas. And it's a type of literature that's meant to be understood through a commentary. And the natural commentary is the one that the author wrote himself, not somebody else. If you write a little tiny book of poetry and somebody asks, somebody writes a book later on saying, this is what his poetry is about. And you're like, actually, no. <laughs> So the Bhagavatam is his own explanation, is his own writing, Yasa's own writing. Okay, a little long there. Let's go into the verse and we can practice together. Any questions or comments? Okay, where's that? Um, where's that share screen? There we go, share screen. Yaswanu Pavam Akila Shuta Saram Ekam Yaswanu Pavam Akila Shuta Shuti Saram Ekam. I just realized I was saying Shuta, but Shuti, Shuti. Yaswanu Bhavam Akila Shuti Sadam Ekam Yaswanu Bhavam Akila Shuti Sadam Ekam Next line. 
Adyatma divam atiti tishatam tamandam. Adyatma divam atiti tishatam tamandam. Anda, the dark well. Adyatma deepam atiti tirshatam tamandam. Adyatma deepam atiti tirshatam tamandam. Sam sarinam karna yaha purana guhyam. I, I had to do this, you know, I had to work on this because some I, I would emphasize the wrong syllable and then it just didn't come out right. So I remember I would so I'd say I would say like Karuna uh, Yaha or something like that. I would just do it on the wrong, and then it just didn't. But there's like there's a meter, there's a rhythm, and when we get it right, then it all fits together. Samsarinam Karuna Yaha Purana Kusham. Samsarinam kunayaha purana kuchyam. Samsarinam kunayaha purana kuchyam. Sam sarinam kuna yaha purana gucham. Sam vyasa sunam upayami gurum muninam. And Upayami here we see there. Upayami is the one where he's let me offer my obeisances. Upayami. Because it's the first line starts off with, let me offer my respectful obeisances. And you're like, okay, where is it? Where's that word there? So Upayasa Sunam Upayami Guru Muninam. Vyasa sunam. I don't know, let's see this word sunam. Sunam. Nanda sunam. Oh, there's a son of Nanda. Vyasa sunam. Vyasa sunam. Let's see. Suna, sunam. Sunam. And that sounds like. Sun, <laughs> kind of <like> son. <laughs> He's my son, Sunna. He's my Sunna. I don't think there's, there's probably not a direct link, but Sun, Sunna, Sunna, Sun, Sunna. Look at that. That maybe there is a direct link. Look at that. Come on, Sunna is a Sunna, son of Sunna. Sunna, 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 Sun, Sunna, Sachi Sunna, Sun. Maybe there's a link. Could be a could be a, a link in English there.
Tam Vyasa Sunam Upayami Guru Munina. Did you see when I clicked or did it only share that the screen that I was on? Could you see the other screen I was clicking on? Because I was sharing from the database. base. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So sometimes it only shares one, you know. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, it shares the app. It doesn't share the other apps. Okay. So, yeah, it showed it. Tam yasa sunem upayami gurum muninam. Sunna. I want. I really wonder. What if it is related? Sun and sunnam. Sunnam. If it's not related, at least it's easy. It's, it's something for us to, to another word that you know puts it all together. Kind of helps us remember. Tam vyasa sunam upayami purum. Nina. I yes, one who bada Mikil Akila should decide a make come. I yat my deep um a titty, dear Shatam Samanda. Sam sari nam kuna yaha purana gusyam. Tam yasa sunam upayami gurum muninam. What do you guys think so far? You feel like it's flowing a little better than you expected, or a little bit? I still have problems with the uh, pronunciation, but following along. Yeah, it's starting to come easier for me, but still, you know, even compared to last week's, it's it's a little, it's easier to stumble over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what is the one of them? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I I would stop right there. Just a titi. And I put like this is like two e's. A titi tirshatam tamandam. A titi. Tirshatam tam atiti tirshatam tirshatam. I I do the pause after the third t atiti tirshatam tamon tam. Say it again. Atiti tirshatam tamon tam. Atiti tirshatam tamon. Yeah, that's good. Can you can you uh, recite the, the verse? Um, not well, but I'll try. Okay. Yes, fan ubavam akila shutas shuti saram. Let me try that again. Yes, fan ubavam akila shuta saram ekam. I think you're doing the same thing I did. Uh, uh, instead of shuti, we're, we're saying shuta shuti saram. Uh, yes, yes, fan ubavam akila shuti saram ekam. Adyat madipam atititir shatam tamon tam. Sang saranam karunaya hapurana gu yang. Yang vyasa sunam upayami gurum muninam. Okay, okay. Adyat madipam atitishat. Adyat madipam atitishatam tamandam. 
Adhyatma Deepam Atiti Tishitam Tamandam. The way I was doing is um, Adhyatma Deepam Atiti Tishitam Tamandam. A little different emphasis. I don't know what's right. I'm not a Sanskritist. Yeah. I, as long as we got the correct letters, I think we're, we're pretty good. The rhythm seems right. The meter seems a, 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 a approximate, like we're, we're in the ballpark. Sangsadinam karna yaha purana kuhyam. Tam vyasa sunam upayami hurum muninam. Vyasa sunam, sunam, the sunam of vyas, the son of vyas. Upayami. Let's see, do the upayami. Put your hands together, do some upayami, upayami, upayami. Some of these smaller words are also good to, to try to remember. I know there's a lot of words here, and sometimes it's even Bhagavatam's a little bit more, can be more complex than Bhagavad Gita, the words that they use. But ya, yaha, means he who. So that person, that person who swanu bhavam, who completely self-assimilated, akila, all should be Vedas, the cream of the Vedas, ekam. Adhyatma deepam, ekas one. Ekam, dve, trini, chadvari, pancha, chat, sapta, ashtanava, dasha. Sarmekam Samsadinam Adyatma Deepam Atiti Tirshatam Tamandam. How about let's have uh, Edward give us give us a chant uh, one line at a time. I'll mute myself. Yaswanu bhavam akila shruti saram ekam. Yaswanu. Adhyatma dipam atititir shatam tamondam. Samsarinam karunayaha puranaguyam. Tam Vyasa Sunum Upayami Gurum Muninam. So give that, you see that there's a one, two, yeah, yeah, swa, yeah, tam, sa, tam, yeah. That second syllable, hit that, hit that hard. Tam, swa, yam, ya, swa, nupam, adyat, mandi, pam, sam, sadinam. Then it hits that, hit that uh, meter there. Yes, Swan Ubava Makilam, the Sadamakam, Adyat Madipa Matitit, Sam Sadinam Kuruna Yaha Purana Kusyam, Tam Yasa Sunam Poyam, Ikurumuninam, Yes, Swan Ubava, Yadyat Madipa, Sam Sadinam. Tam ya tam ya sasunam. So that's that that second syllable here. It's like is hit as the meter. There you go. Give it give it a shot again. Yaswanum bhavam akila shruti saram ekam adhyatma deepam atititir shatam tamondam samsarinam. Karunaya hapurana guyam. 
Tam Vyasa Sunum Upayami Guru Muninam. Okay, and then just do that second line. Adyatma Deepam. Adyatma Deepam Atititir Shatam Tamandam. And we're trying to keep that, it's, it's, the rhythm is meant to help. Adyatma Deepam Atititir Shatam Tamandam. Adyatma Deepam Atititir Adyatma deepam. Adyatma deepam atititir shatam tamondam. Yeah, I think I think the stop should be there that because it that's where the it really hits there. Adyatma deepam atititir shatam tamondam. Adyatma deepam atitit. Shatamtamandam. <laughs> Tirshatam tamandam. Adyat madipam atiti tirshatam tamandam. Adyatma deepam atiti dirshatam tamandam. Adyatma deepam atiti dirshatam tamandam. Very good, very good. Okay. Uh, let's see, Dan K. We haven't heard from you. This is a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Ya swanu bhavam akila shuti sada mekam. Ya swanu bhavam akila shuti sada mekam. This is akila, akila. 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 Complete. All of the Vedas, Shrutis, all of the Vedas, the Saram, the essence. Saram. Ya Swanu Bhavam Akila Shruti Saram Ekam. Ya Swanu Bhavam Akila Shruti Saram Ekam. Akila. 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 Ah, Ya Swanu Bhavam Akila Shuti Sara Mekam. Ya Swanu Bhavam Akila Shuti Sara Mekam. Adyatma Deepam Atiti Tishatam Tamandam. Yatma deepam atiti tishatam tumbodam. Sam sarinam karuna yaha purana gujam. Sam sarinam karuna yaha purana gujam. Tam Vyasa Sunam Upayami Guru Muninam. Tam Vyasa Sunam Upayami Guru Muninam. <laughs> Those last two words are tough for me for some reason. Guru? 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 Muni. Muninam. Like Narada Muni. Muni Nam. 
Yeah, Muni is like a, a sage. Muni means someone who is very mona. He's very grave, very silent. He's very thoughtful. He's uh, so Yah, the son of Yas, he's actually the guru of all the Munis. He's, he's being glorified as the guru of the great sages. Guru Muninam. Muninam. I think the Inam is, means plural. I remember. Atam Vyasasunam Upayami Guru Inam. All right, Carmen. Um, yes, Vanum Bavam Akiva Shutri Sadam Ekam. Very nice. Uh, say, shut, uh, say Shuti again. Shuti. Yes. Say one more time, the first line. Very good. One more time. Yes, I think you have an R behind the T that's not actually there. And so you said instead of Shutri instead of Shuti. Shuti. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shuti. One more time. One more time. Yes, Shuti. Saram Ekam. Did it hit? Good, good, good. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, ma. Uh, yeah, ma. Uh, yeah, ma. Uh, <laughs> Sam Sarinam Karunayaha Purana Kuham Yam Tam Vyasa Sunum Upayami Kurum Muninam. Okay. All right, so everyone on. Take off your, uh, unmute your mics. Okay, now, um, okay. Who can say, what is Shruti? Say it quickly. Um, beta, or that which is heard. That which is heard, beta, yes. Uh, anda, Anda. Carmen, what is Anda? Oh. I forgot. It's a, a dark. It's like a. It means darkness. It means like a well, like a dark well. Under dark well. No, you're under the well. <laughs> under, the ground, under. Okay. Uh, Vishvato Mukha. What is Titir Shatam? Titir Shatam, hard to pronounce. Um, I, I have to. It's one of the yeah. harder words. Not a, I haven't seen that word anywhere else in my verses study. A titir Shatam, desiring to overcome. Um, Prabhu, um, you were asking about the word. Um, Akilatma or Akila. I, I looked, it was very, it was somehow in my head it, it, from a familiar verse, and I found it's from the Brahma Sangita, where Lord Brahma says, Goloka eva nivasatya akilatma bhuta. Ah. So there, here it's translated as all around in um, Brahma Sangita, Akilatma means the soul of all. Oh. So the purport is that. Goloka Eva Nivasati, Olo Krishna resides eternally in his abode, Goloka. He's Ak Akilatma Bhuta. He can be approached um, even here, here also, because he's the soul of all. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. Very nice. 
David K., what is Deepam? Deepam. Torchlight. 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 All right. I like that one. <laughs> uh, Carmen, tell us a Guyam. Tell us a Guyam. <clears throat> hey, Guyam? Yeah. Like, what does Guyam mean? Yeah, tell us a Guyam. Uh, A secret, a secret. Secret. Okay, so under is like under, well, like dark well. Yeah. Guyam is secret. Yes, yes. And anybody have any prashnas? Any prashnas? This is from the first verse. Anyone have any prashnas? Questions? Let's do a... Uh, um, here we can uh, again mute, and then we'll, we'll do. We'll just work through the verses. So uh, first one is uh, Suta. Is it Suta Vacha? Suta Vacha. Yes. 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 Vipranam Rama Harshanihi Patipujas Patas Jejam Pravaptum Upachakrame Yam Prava Janta Manupetam Apeta Krityam. Okay, we have that's on Sutta Uvacha. Yam Prava Janta Manupetam Apeta Krityam. What's the next line after that one? Uh, then that's a uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Prabhajantam. Dwaipayano. 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 <laughs> All right, you guys want to hear something? <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> one. All right, so um, I was like. Um, you know, practicing the verses in my head, like as I'm trying to fall asleep, I was practicing the verses, and and then I was like half asleep, like like just okay, I'm just like meditate on this as I go to sleep, try to like, and then my wife woke me up, and uh, and and she said, "Did you hear that? I heard a voice." And I was like, "What?" I was like, "I, I was like, what? What did you hear?" He said, "I heard." I you know, I you know. I was like, oh, that was, that was me. <laughs> I guess she thought it was a ghost or something. Because <laughs> remember, I was saying, Daipayano, and then, uh, and then Vishwatomu Prabhu, he, you know, he said, okay, look at it, look at the verse, or not, we're not doing it right, you know, we're missing something. So it was, uh, it's Daipayano, and so I was saying. Pie, do I pie, you know, and I, I, I guess I said it out loud, and um, and so she just heard me you know, like in my sleep saying, I you know, or something, and she woke me up. Do I pie, you know, virahatara ajuhava. Okay, I'm looking at it now. Putre on a putre titan maya taya tara vo vine lucis. My son, my son, my son. And only the echoes of the trees. Um, what was it? Tam sarva bhuta hitayam munim anan anatosmi. And the munim is there. Okay, let's. Who else wants to give us a, ch a chant? Vishwatomaka Prabhu? And give us a chant. By memory? Uh I as whatever you would like to do, you could do like maybe okay, I'll, I might have to cheat and look at the book a bit. Okay. Um Vyasa Ubacha 
iti sam prasna sam hrišto, vipranam romaharsinihi, pratipujya prachastesham, pravaktum upachakrame, sutta uvacha, yang pravajantam upachakrame, Yang pravajantam upupeta upeta krityam vapayano pirahakatara ajuhava putre tiyantan mayataya vitaravo binedus tam sarva buta hideyang munemana tosmi ya sarva buta akilashuta sadam ekam Adhyatma dipam atititir shatam tamondham Sangsaranam karunayaha purana guyam Tam yasa sunam upayami gurum muninam After this week, it gets a lot easier. Yes, yes, it does. It gets a lot easier. These, are, a lot like, these are like 14 syllable lines. And after this, they're like eight syllable lines. So learning one of these verses is like learning two of the other verses almost. Yeah. There was a and there was a little mix between the Brahma Samhita there. Uh yeah. Uh it Sarva Bhuta Akila Shitasara. And then uh Swanubhav, Swanubhav, a little mix there. Mm. Yeah, we're we're. It's kind of like as you said, Krishna is giving us like a little bit of like, okay, there's the big hurdle. If you can pass this hurdle, then you're you're really on the home run, right? You know, not the home run. We still got a lot of verses, but the verses are going to become very. Um, they're shorter, and many of them are very commonly heard. And when right. you hear verses a lot, sometimes they're. Even if you never memorize it, sometimes it's just it's just a little bit there already. So like Narayanam um, Namaskritya. Oh my God, that that one. You know, we're gonna everybody hears that. Or as um, Pum Sam Paro Dharma, verse six. That's another one you hear a lot, and that's a very important verse. My Zoom was kept on cutting out. Um Kapuru, you have any uh, thoughts on the verse you'd like to share? Anything you wanna um nothing offhand. Okay, so I I think we all understand it pretty well that the I'm and we're not maybe we're not like a maybe Swanu Bhavam like where we've completely assimilated it but at least we you know we can understand the words and um and go oh hand raised carmen ortega has her hand raised yes there we go let's see um so on that you know like dark well it reminds me of that analogy of Srila Prabhupada that he can he can like extend his hand or put a rope, but he can't get it to climb it. Mm -hmm. So he has to you know, willingly uh, want to take the medicine and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, we're in that helpless condition. Only the great devotees can help us extend. They can extend their hand down. It's even like you hear in that Krishna book where Krishna, like he extends his hand down. And his it said like there was a lizard at the bottom of a well, like some giant, giant lizard. And Krishna stretched his arm like super long and, and pulled him out. And then he turned into a demigod. He said, thank you. I was cursed. And now I'm free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so, yeah, we're in that like helpless condition where we need, you know, Krishna and his representatives to, to, you know, give us access and, and, and a deepening of our, our you know, giving access, access to devotional service. And also deepening our devotional service. Nice. Okay, I think we we went a little we went a bit long today, but uh, thank you all very much for being here and and continuing on, even though it's uh, as Mr. Tomoka Prabhu said, it's, it's our long verse, and it's like it's like you've learned 
uh, you know, six verses already or five verses from the beginning almost. Um, it gets shorter, it gets a little easier, and then the verses become more familiar. And then also sometimes the verses you'll find maybe more useful for you in discussing because I'll have some key philosophical points like verse six has key philosophical points that devotional service is unmotivated and uninterrupted. This is like a defining what are the definition of bhakti. Um, and you know, other points are there. So thank you so much. Hari Om Tat Sat. Thanks a lot. Hari. Uh, and so I'll hopefully see you all next week. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.